Today I'm going to be doing something different in celebration of the 55th anniversary of Vincebus Eruptum by the band Blue Cheer, released on uh, January 16, 1968. I'm going to do a complete ranking of all their albums. Well, this band actually has 10 studio albums. They were released over a, almost like a 40-year period. They released six albums from 1968 to 1971, one album in the 80s, two in the 90s, and their final one in 2000. And seven. So there were a lot of different stylistic changes over the years. This is also considered uh, one of the first heavy metal bands, but it's kind of subjective. Uh, they were one of the first bands using distortion and playing chugging guitar riffs. That's until bands like Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath uh, did it a lot much better. I'll talk about that during this ranking, so let me get into it. And number 10 is O oh Pleasant Hope. This is their sixth album released in April of 1971. They went in more of a folk rock direction, and this will be their last album for over 10 years. The opening track is called Believer. It has some cool guitar riffs, but it reminds me a lot of like the Rolling Stones. The guitars are slightly distorted, but it's okay. Oh Pleasant Hope is a softer piano song that reminds me of something like Bob Dylan or Neil Young, that type of thing. I'm the Light is a folk rock song with some acoustic guitar strumming and has some psychedelic undertones. They also have some blues on here with a song called Lester the Arrester. It's kind of boring for me. It's okay, but that's why I have it last. At number nine, I have Vincebus Eruptum, their debut album. This album is considered to be one of the first heavy metal albums released, and it was released on January 16, 1968, celebrating its 55th anniversary. It has the hit song Summertime Blues, originally by Eddie Cochran, but Here's the thing, it's not very good. It's just very sloppy. The production is bad. And I think that they were just starting out as a band and they used like a lot of distortion, but the songs are just not that great. At times they even sound like they're not even like keeping time with each other. So the album has three cover songs, the aforementioned Summertime Blues, Rock Me Baby by B.B. King, and a song called Parchment Farm about a prison in Mississippi. That's an old Delta Blues song. That's like half the album being cover songs and the other half are original songs. So this one, it's influential. It's very renowned, but I just never liked it. At number eight is a new improved. Uh, this was released in uh, March of 1969. It's their third album and uh, released on the Philips record label. Kind of strange because they had two different lineups on each album. So the sound is very different when you go from side A to side B. Also, side A has six short songs, and side B has two long songs and one minute and a half song. So the whole album clocks in at about 30 minutes. So side A, we have uh, When It All Gets Old, it's kind of like a folk rock sound, so maybe similar to something like The Grateful Dead. West Coast Child of Sunshine is an upbeat psychedelic blues rock song with some funky piano. On side two, we have a song called Peace of Mind. It's just a seven minute song. More like psychedelic space rock, a little slower and more atmospheric. The album is not too bad, just very different. At number seven, I have Outside Inside. This was also released in 1968, about eight months after the debut. And this one is a big improvement over the debut. It has a few cover songs like Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones, but also more original songs. On this one, the band is now starting to feel comfortable playing with each other and the sound is more cohesive. The opening track, Feathers From Your Tree, is a psychedelic rock song. Maybe similar to something like Pink Floyd's Piper at the Gates of Dawn kind of sound. The production is still kind of raw and the distorted guitars sound very fuzzy. They do some psychedelic folk rock with a song, a Sun Cycle, just a little bit. It has a cool like proto-metal guitar riff and cool drum fills. Gypsy Ball is more out there with some spacey sounds and fuzzy guitars. So this one's not too bad. At number six, I have Blue Cheer, the self-titled album released in December of 1969. This is their fourth album. This one is not too bad. The band is starting to find their sound, focusing more on psychedelic rock and less on that proto-metal sound. The opening track is called Fool, the more straightforward classic rock song with harmonica and piano. This one has a nice beat and a classic 60s rock sound. Saturday Freedom has a slight hard rock sound. They still have some distortion in the guitars, but they turned it down a little more than they did before. 
something similar to those early 70s bands like uh, Mountain or Foghat. Rock and Roll Queens has cool like Motown rhythm and a blues type of sound. It's an upbeat and fun song. And the song Natural Man is a cool, funky sound. Another good album. It's very consistent. It sounds a lot better than some of their early albums. At number five is Highlights and Low Lives. This is their eighth studio album released in 1990. Now they are signed with the Thunderbolt record label. And this one came out right after their metal album from 1984, which I will talk about in a few minutes. But this time, they sound more like ACDC or Crocus, like that kind of hard rock sound. The opening track, Urban Soldiers, is just a fun hard rocking song. Great drum beat. Hunter of Love is a little heavier, a little more like stoner rock with slower tempos and heavy dissonant guitar riffs. Blue Steel Do sounds more like those blues-based glam metal bands from that period. Maybe something like White Snake. Flight of the Enola Gay. Kind of sounds like Iron Maiden type of song with like heavy guitar riffs and the fast bass grooves and it mentions the Enola Gay. I think that made me think of the song Tail Gunner by Iron Maiden. And the other songs, Hooch Coochie Man and Down and Dirty, have more of like an ACDC kind of sound. At number four, The Original Human Being. This is their fifth album released in September 1970 and probably one of the most consistent albums. They added some horn sections to the sound. It's still psychedelic rock with some blues and country. Now, I like the song uh, Babaji, Twilight Raga. It's an instrumental that kind of sounds like the Beatles were doing with those Middle Eastern sounds, like more specifically those like George Harrison songs. They use like the sitar and different instruments. But the opening track, Good Times Are Hard to Find, classic psychedelic rock sound, then more guitar riffs, just classic rock. They seem to have abandoned their proto-metal sound at this point in the career. The song Make Me Laugh has a cool bass guitar sound and it captures uh, the sound of the late 60s. The song Preacher has a very funky sound with added horn sections. Black Sun, just classic blues rock with harmonica. Overall, very consistent. Now, the top three albums are going to be albums that were more from their like, later period. So, uh, at number three, I have Dining with the Sharks. This was released in 1991, and they continue with that hard rock, blues rock, and stoner sound. So the opening track is a very ACDC type of sound with some big guitars, and a blues rock and arena rock sound. Outrider has some thick and heavy guitar riffs. They slowed it down a bit on that one. They have a metal ballad called Gunfight. Starts out with some clean guitars. Kind of reminded me of a band like Wasps when they play some of their softer songs. The song eventually picks up with some 80s style heavy metal guitar riffs. They get heavy with the song, Cut the Costs. That's more like going into like speed metal. And uh, that song is similar to maybe a band like Accept. And the vocals actually remind me of uh, Udo. So. And then they did a country song, which kind of sounds out of place, uh, When Two Spirits Touch. And they closed with a cover of Jimi Hendrix, Foxy Lady. At number two, The Beast is Back, the album released in 1984. 13 years after uh, their previous one. It's kind of a compilation, and many of the songs were re-recordings, but I'm going to include it because it was a, an, a turning point for the band. So the band is now reformed. They joined Megaforce Records. So they basically came back as an 80s metal band. It was co-produced by Johnny Zazulo, so he was a big influence on the new heavy metal sound. So the opening track sounds like traditional 80s metal, Something similar to early Twisted Sister or Quiet Riot has a chugging guitars and pounding drums and they still have a little blues rock sound attached as well. There's another version of Summertime Blues which is like a lot better than the original. Ride With Me is more of a metal power ballad with some sustained power chords and a thick bass guitar grooves. And the vocals uh, remind me a little of Dee Snider on that song. Girl Next Door sounds kind of like Iron Maiden again with heavy riffs and, and like a galloping sound. Overall, very good comeback. It's just a really good, that's the like, most like metal album. But not number one. So the one I have for number one is called uh, What Doesn't Kill You. Their final album released 16 years after the previous album. And it's pretty good. And, like They came back together on the Rain Man record label. And they put just a very cohesive album. And it just sounds very good. In general, it's hard rock. But it's more like blues based. But they do delve into heavy metal at times. The opening track, Rolling Them Bones, is a cool ACDC type of song with some cool blues guitar rock riffs. Born Under a Bad Sign is heavy uh, blues rock. 
There's some distorted guitars in that one, but sound quality is very good. They get a little sludgy on the song uh, Gypsy Rider. That's almost like an Alice in Chains type of song. Then they take a step back with uh, Young Lions in Paradise, a softer country rock song. I don't know about you. It's like funk metal or funk rock. And the most metal song in the album is called I'm Gonna Get You with some heavy distorted guitar riffs and pounding drums. Kind of like a corrosion of conformity sludge metal type of song. And also a re-recording of just a little bit from their second album, but done very better, better, done a lot better. Overall, a solid album, and it was released in 2007, but I forgot to mention that, but as you see, I put that in the subtitle. So, that's all. Let me know if you're familiar with any of these albums besides their debut. They had a very strange and diverse career, but I'm happy I did the deep dive into the catalog because I did find some gems here. That's all. Let me know what you think of the com- in the comments. Check out this playlist. These are my other anniversary reviews of 2023. And I will see you in the next one.